the best part of your week is about to begin. This is the time where we talk shop, swap stories, and share lessons from our wild adventures in the creative industry. With each and every lovingly crafted episode, we strive to bottle that magic, warm, electric feeling you get after coffee with a new friend or attending a fantastic breakout session at a creative conference. You might start as strangers, but you'll leave as friends. Buckle up, settle in, and get ready for this episode of Making a Mark. Hello and welcome, guys. It is a great time to be alive. It's Friday, and we are recording live here on YouTube for another beautiful episode of Making a Mark. I am joined, as always, by someone who has made an astounding, like truly flabbergasting goal of not running one, not two, but three marathons this year. Ashley Ulmer, come on up to the stage. Wait, what? What are you talking about? Three marathons? Yeah, you remember before the 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 video here, I was astonished uh, that you said you were you had signed up for three marathons to run this year. That just feels like a really ambitious yeah, New Year's resolution totally. that you promised you would do. So yep, I, I don't know. Do you yep, want until uh, December, and I'll I'll be on that. I don't know where I don't know where this came from. I don't know why you're putting me on the spot like that, but I definitely don't run. So that's not me. <laughs> Actually, it's 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 if you haven't picked up, we're on episode what sixteen now. I'm going to try and throw you off a little bit uh, on the intro every time. It, it, I'm part of, part of the, the, the... I was I, I was saying I'm already thrown off because as you can hear, my dog is going crazy in the background and I can't get him to chill out. So I'm already frazzled. So you're just throwing me off my game even more so right now. Well, that's the name of the game. Uh, this show is all about <laughs> keeping everybody a little bit off balance and uh, yeah, keeping it keeping it raw, keeping it real. Um, <laughs> speaking speaking of which. Uh, I'm going to blow up our question today. So I know we had talked, we had originally planned on talking about, um, what have we originally talked about? New, oh yeah. Like new how new ideas, ideas. For business for your business. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I have a different topic and I'm going to wait to roll that out. Um, oh. once everybody comes on stage. So, uh, who do we have joining us today? We have the amazing Joe Cavazos and do you want me to say, do you want me to say the second guest or not yet? Yeah. And Josh Warner. <laughs> hey. 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 Uh, Guys, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, excited to be here. Joe, do you want to tell folks a little bit about yourself? I, 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 I feel like there's some guests I know a lot of things about and some guests I barely know anything about. And so it feels unfair for me to tell people all the things I already know about you. But uh, yeah, why? why uh, what makes you great? What makes me great? <laughs> no pressure. Uh, no pressure. Uh, yeah. Nah, man. I don't know. Uh, just I like like to work hard and create things. I mean, I've been doing this. Uh, been a freelance designer for nine years now, but uh, you know, been kind of in the creative world for the last twenty. I'm a I'm an old head uh, when it comes to uh, creating, and so um, down in Mission, Texas, South Texas. Uh, uh, got three kids, a wife, and uh, you know, just enjoying life down here. But that's pretty much it. That's what makes me great. I love it. I love it. And uh, we'll we'll take a look at some of the stuff here in just a second. But uh, the projects that I know you're involved in are obviously like your own design stuff, uh, and then yeah. you are one one half of the Sunday Social Magic. Mm -hmm. And is there any other yes. stuff you've got going on these days? Uh, yeah, Sunday. So, I mean, I guess I should talk about what, what I really do. <laughs> yeah, Sunday social, uh, you know, I partner with my friend Jonathan Mom, and uh, we help churches with graphics, social media, um, um, creating content for that. And then, uh, another project we got going is New Supply, which is like a yeah, a that's right, of yeah, drops every month of uh, assets from great designers. Um, you know that just create create stuff uh every uh, every month we drop three different products and you just sign up for that month at a killer deal uh of like five bucks a month and um yeah those are kind of the two big projects i got going right now and oh. some in the back burner back burner that can't talk about yet mm -hmm. of course no i love uh i mean i love i love all three of these things but one of the things that's cool to me about new supply and i guess it's kind of the similar model from Sunday social is this just a flat monthly deal for killer stuff. And so uh, depending on your situation, especially uh, if you are you know, on staff at a church and needing to crank out graphics, I know churches that have like 
big media departments that still subscribe to Sunday Social just because you never know when you need to fill the gap and uh, do some other stuff in here. Mm -hmm. And you know how much I love these season kits, too. I think that that's a fantastic idea and way for you to really kind of have a theme for a chunk of time uh, in your deal. Uh, yeah, Josh, how are you doing today, my dude? Thanks for joining us. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, thanks. For me. I'm excited to be here. My first podcast appearance. So if I come off extremely awkward and weird, I just I'm just getting some experience. It's okay. <laughs> I've done tons of podcasts, and I'm awkward yeah. and weird. So you're you're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah where are you from what do you do uh i'm from california um we bounce around a lot um but currently still live in california um and right now i bounce between like agency design um working at uh different churches uh, and freelance design i was freelancing for a couple of years before okay. um late last year i took a job with a crypto company called valence because i've been doing a little bit more of that in the past couple of years um so building like Web3 products, like wallets, um, working on NFT collections, that kind of thing. That's so cool. So when you're doing that stuff, are you like doing UI UX stuff or are you like creating actual um, artwork for some of those platforms? For this company, more the UI UX stuff. I actually got my start as well as like a web designer and then UI UX designer and then product designer as the uh, terms just kind of like morphed and changed over time. Um, and then, so I got my start there and then over time kind of worked my way more into graphic design, branding, art direction, eventually type design, uh, 3d art, that kind of thing. I just kind of like collect skills <laughs> over time. Um, I love that. Just whatever kind of, uh, intrigues me. Um, how long, so, how long yeah. have you been in, in the industry, quote unquote? Um, about eight years. Before okay. that, I, yeah, I got my start in YWAM. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Youth yeah. Missions, like a big international missions organization. Um, uh, I'd made like posters for my friends' bands growing up. So when they needed uh, some just like advertising for schools or programs, I was just like, well, I know Photoshop a little bit. And then they needed a new website. So I was like, well, I can teach myself how to make something that way. This is like, I think before Squarespace or whatever. Yeah. So I built something on, on WordPress. Um, and then when we stepped out, that's when I was like, well, I should probably get like a real job and so joined a local agency, um, got an internship, got another job after that. And then kind of went from there. That's cool. cool. Dude, your stuff is is very strong. I haven't uh, looked at Thank yours you. or Joe's like feeds in a while, but I know that you, you're cranking out good stuff. Um, and you're you're some part associated with Choir Girl, too, right? Yeah, so that's just me and a couple of friends who wanted to get together and make stuff on the side. Um, okay. We, yeah, we. it kind of started from trying to figure out ways to work with musicians um, who just didn't have like a ton of startup capital. You know, they couldn't, they didn't want to sign with a record label and like kind of sign their life away. Um, mm. But they also didn't have a ton of money to spend like, you know, four thousand dollars on like an album cover and campaign rollout and stuff so we're like well what can we do to um to work with these guys and maybe do have like a different revenue model like profit splits or just like i don't know some revenue sharing or we'll work with you on an album cover and some singles and like a campaign rollout and then uh you know maybe we'll take like a profit split on like a merch series or something so but also it's just kind of like we wanted to take projects that we wanted that were interesting and um, we wanted to work with people that we really believed in. Like at the top, I think there's um, an album cover we worked on um, right in the middle there, that kind of collage one on the background. Oh, that's, that's so for, nice. Thank you. Yeah, it was like um, an album cover for a, an artist we love named Ethan Nathaniel, um, just a super talented musician and singer. Um, but, you know, he's just getting started out. It's uh, It would be, it's tough for him to like, you know, pay for all this stuff unless we're, we're here to kind of step in and just like work with them. Yeah, um, that's so interesting. It, yeah. So it's kind of like an off and on thing. We don't really take a whole lot of work because we all have other stuff that's going on. So um, is yeah. it so first of all, the name Choir Girl, that's so good. Like I've Thank I'm you. obsessed with that name. That's so sick. Um, yeah. But like is so like all these pieces of artwork that Josh is looking at the screen right now. Are those like do you guys create those and then art like artists 
can come on there and say, oh, we like that one. Let's modify it for us. Or this, it's just basically like this is a portfolio of things you guys have done. So it's not like it's pre-made stuff they can pick from, right? You, you're you making right. a custom for them. Okay, cool. Right. It's kind of like we needed something to show what we could do. So this is kind of a collection of stuff from me. Um, Brettley Ruggles is a UI UX designer, but uh, she does a lot of like film and video before that. She's working for uh, Music Z right now. Um, and then Mitchell McCleary, who's design lead at Jesus Culture. But I met both of them when we were all kind of working at the same time at uh, Bethel here in Reading. Oh, okay. um, and so, yeah, that's how we got to know each other. Um, but we just kind of threw it all up there just to show kind of what we could do. Cool. Um, yeah. I, I do have to confess here, Josh, that uh, people like you make me mad. Uh, because you're like, you start out, you're great at something, right? You, you're you're just killing it. And then you say, oh, but what if I like jump lanes and then spend three years doing this other thing and become excellent at that as well? And meanwhile, I'm over here like trying to catch up with Ver with Josh 1.0. And uh, yeah, some, some folks just have it all. And I'm glad to have you with us here today. Uh, let, that brings us into our next segment of the show. How'd you make it? Ash, what are the pieces that we wanted to have? The, so basically the way this works, guys, is you guys will pull up some something you've made recently. And I uh, would love to just kind of have you walk us through the thought process behind it, how it was made, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, so, um, Josh, when you go. OK, so scroll down a little bit. The one I picked was right there. This one, right? Yeah. I thought that one was super cool. cool. Thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, this is a while back. I'm trying to remember if I was using a hundred um, weeks ago that was what two years ago oh my yeah. bad I didn't oh, know long ago. <laughs> yeah i don't i don't <clears throat> post a ton it's funny you were talking about like oh i hate people like that who can just like change lanes but i've been thinking a lot about this where it's like you guys have heard that that uh that phrase the riches are in the niches uh, mm -hmm. where it's like if you really want to be successful you have to you have to figure out like a very defined lane and then you own that um, yeah so, I mean, I would say you fall into this, Josh, with like your, you know, oh. logos for youth groups and churches. Um, and then, yeah, Ash was more like illustrative stuff. But even Joe, like um, very like photo collage stuff that's like very cool visual art. Um, and so I've just kind of like tried to do that. Like I tried to do that with graphic design, with web design, with type design, and later with 3D. Um, and every time I just get so burnt out on it, um, that I kind of like keep switching lanes. And then I feel yeah. like, I feel like it has held me back a little bit, a little bit in that people could come to my like Instagram or portfolio and they're like, well, what's this what guy does he do? Yeah. What do I, what do I get from this guy? Like I hire him to like, do what then? Um, you know, it's like you go to yeah. Joshua Noom's account and it's like, I'm going to get Joshua Noom's style for my, right. You're going to get some illustrations. It's going to be this kind of kind of vibe and like there's a pretty clear connection points yeah but from a career standpoint i, I still think it's it's impressive and and there's like an intangible mm -hmm. stuff that i see through your stuff there's it's got really great like i don't know if structure is the right word yeah but in the same kind of like intangible thing that like wes anderson has going on where you're like mm -hmm. look at it and you're like there's i can't name what it is or like why mm -hmm. but like it it just jumps off the page at you and mm -hmm. Man, props to you on that one. Uh, tell you. us about this thing that you made two years ago, mm -hmm. though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, I was learning 3D. I think, I'm not sure if this is in Blender or Cinema 4D. Blender's like a free 3D ask. program. Yeah, yeah. with... Um, maybe uh, it says Blender in the hashtags. Oh, there, okay, yeah. so Blender. Yeah, so people have reached out and they're like, okay, what do I do to get started in 3D? And I'm like, download Blender because um, yeah. it's free and it has everything that you can do. Um, and so I was just learning it, experimenting with it. And I think you were talking about like personal, personal style that kind of emerges. Like, I feel like for me, that's emerged over time from really trying to not have a personal style. And then the more work you produce, it just kind of emerges over time. Yeah. Um, sure. So, yeah. So when I was experimenting, it was just like, man, I love, <laughs> I love shiny gold chrome stuff and also Jesus. Um, so oh, Jesus. how can I, <laughs> yeah. How can I make just something interesting with like simple shapes? And then these are a yeah. couple of like 3D models that I found um, for free. There's a ton of them on the web. So you just kind of mix and match and combine things um, oh, well, cool. while you learn. So, it's, you know, it's like the best way to learn something is just work on projects using those skills. So mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. I feel like uh, I, I've used Adobe Dimension, which is, mm. is much more limited than uh, Blender. And I feel like the textures in Blender are just so much nicer. Uh, Joe, you do a lot of this. Uh, it, one of the reasons I wanted to have you guys on the same show is you'll have in some ways a, a similar style. And, mm. and I, I, I say that very broadly. What I mean is like mm. it, it feels... It feels futuristic is also like a yeah. crappy word to use, but you guys both feel like y'all are like living in 2035 and ahead of the curve. That might be the word y'all are ahead of the curve. And like, I'm just like, I don't even want to try and figure out how you did this because it's so much of it is so crazy. Yeah. Like what, like what's the term? Like it's not, not futuristic, but it's almost like it's things you would picture like in your dreams. Like it's like, mm-hmm. you know um, what I'm saying? like it's like surreal like surrealism. Only, like, surreal yes like it is both of them are very surreal super cool this is the one this i was, i love this one i think it's super nice um joe you want to you want to unpack space chaser for us um yeah again <clears throat> this was a while back uh <laughs> but yeah man i, I might <laughs> be like, i just wanted yeah. i didn't want to pick the first one Nah, don't pick like, the first one because that one that one was a while back too. So uh, <laughs> it's been a while since I posted new work, but uh, no, nah, I mean my thing over with Instagram was just kind of exploring, um, and some stuff uh, you can go through there, and there's some stuff that's like, uh, what was I thinking? And I think just like Josh is like, I always try to avoid to have a style, but in that process of avoiding, like I picked up a style, uh, and it's always like trying to dig something new. Um, and to me, I feel, you know, like maybe like a, in a sense, like a DJ, like a DJ visual remixer and just always looking at images and trying to figure mm. out like, how can I take this one image and turn yeah. it to something else? And that's usually what like the process starts for me. Uh, so for this one example, like I had, you know, pictured this, um, the, the image of, of the astronaut, you know, uh, saved for a while. And then it was just the process of like, tinkering and playing and so that's instagram you know the stuff i post there most 90 percent of that stuff it's not intentional in any way it just starts with one image and then it's like mixing uh other imagery and um and in that process it's like you know we get this and so sometimes it's hard because i know some people like you know especially like going into like school or you know thinking about projects like you always kind of want to have the end goal in mind and for me a lot of my work that's not there. Like, you know, I don't even sketch the stuff out. Um, but then I finally kind of embrace that and vi- like, Hey, that's part of my process <clears throat> It's just, you know, kind of tinkering until you figure out something. Um, yeah. and one of the things I would add about Josh's work and it's a huge thing, uh, is that, um, that you can see, you might say, Josh, Oh, well, you know, I've tinkered around, moved around a lot, but you, you could definitely see you have really good taste, uh, with what you create. And I think that's what, sometimes separates designers and creators is just that 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 taste and uh, that you can only get it from like doing stuff over and over and over and it doesn't matter what the technique is it doesn't matter what the software is it's like that do you have good taste and Mm. how do you translate that into what you make this is not the topic today but you that is a, a fantastic point and it's something that i've thought about um in the past is like people told me when like before I started doing graphic, like that's why I got the apprenticeship that I got. I wasn't like going up for it or whatever. And the guy said, Oh, you have a good eye. Like I was just laying out a piece of of print stuff that I need to get done. And I was like, okay, cool. Like I, I hear you. Is that like a prerequisite for doing this stuff or can it be learned? I guess that's the better question is, can it be a learned skill? Because I also feel like I have worked alongside of or over designers that, um, it it's clear they there is no like sparkle in what they're doing. It's like you have they don't understand. They know the tools. They understand like the bones of graphic design, but like the pieces aren't coming together. Hmm. And is that something where like it, it like kind of the the ratatouille thing? And can anyone cook? You just got to practice, or is there something that you're born with, like an intangible element sauce. in y'all's mind? It's the sauce that everybody has. It's what we always the talk sauce. about. It is. It's that special that's sauce. That mm-hmm. We oh, should we should have called this podcast the, the sauce because I, know, I feel like I it comes up every single episode. It's true. I know. I think you really failed by changing it to making a mark instead of the sauce. But <laughs> yeah, I. It is. It really like it is like that special sauce. Like you know, at least 
I've talked about this in the past, but at least for me, like when I'm creating, I feel like at some point I could just feel like I just know it's done. Like I just know it's it's where mm-hmm. it should be. And it's that, I don't know, maybe, you know, we could say we could credit it to being the Holy Spirit. We could credit it to being our gut. I don't know, but it's just that that sauce that you just know this is it, you know? And I don't think every single designer has that, or maybe everybody does, but it's their own version of that because I think God uniquely creates that in each of us. So I think it's different for everybody, but I definitely think to be successful, you have to have some sort of eye or some sort of sauce, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes a yeah, sense. Josh, what do you think? Yeah. I, I was going to say, I mean, this is a lame answer, but both. And I guess, cause it's like, you got to start with it. Of course, kind of like just like a naturally talented athlete or something, but it doesn't matter how much talent you have if you're not going to work at it and develop it um because eventually people are going to pass you up um and so i feel like i do kind of i've thought about this a lot and i feel like taste really is um yeah you're born with it but it's also like an an objective skill that you can develop over time and that's just a lot of being intentional about where your influences come from you know it's just like curating your pinterest board or something like that um you know it's are you are you looking outside of just like design Instagram accounts um, for inspiration? Are you trying to push Mm. yourself to really look at things? Um, Are you, yeah, are you looking outside of like um, the stuff that you normally like and trying to um, broaden and expand your influences, I guess? Because it's really like, there's no way you can come up with something completely original all the time. The stuff that we produce is very much a, I mean, I do. You're filtering, (laughs) right, right, exactly. But not all of it, most of us can't. You know, not about all, all of us are just at your level. So it's like, you know, you gotta like, you're, you're kind of like working on your funnel of like influences that are going into your brain. And mm. then, you know, there you bring your special sauce to it and then your output is that. So it's like, you have to kind of curate and influence that funnel. Cause it's like, yeah, there's a lot of people who, um, uh, it's also like very personal too. So it's like, you can't, you could go up to someone and, you know, or you could be talking to someone and be like, I have more like Photoshop skills or something than you. But if you said like, my taste is better than yours, that would be like an insult, right? Like you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't tell, they would be offended by that. But in a lot it's of all- cases, it's very true. You know, it's like, I've worked at this for a while. Like I know what I'm looking at when I'm telling you that this is good or yeah. this is not going to work. Like, trust me when I say that, you know? Dang, that's good. Um, I, I, think I, it's, I think it's developed for sure. Because, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm coming back. Like, you're not seeing any of my work from the early 2000s. And, you know, for me, it wasn't necessarily the process of, like, it just came. It was, like, just hours and hours. Be, before, this is before Instagram, before Facebook. Like, just oh. digging in and working and creating and creating. And eventually came out. I see guys, like, young guys like yourself and, you know, uh, and you know other 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 artists that are coming up and i'm just like blown like just their skill level and the taste you know that's like just like i within a couple years and you know which is cool like i love seeing that i just know for me it was a grind like it took years in the making yeah Um, so i i could see people developing it just i think some people just give up too soon um Mm. and that's Mm. or they get sold or they get lost on the technical aspect of it and because that's the things like you, you have, you have to have good taste, but then you also have the technical, the mm. you know, uh, development. And I think some people get so enamored about like how do you do it, you know, what software, yeah. all this, then that, that that they like they don't focus on the the taste aspect. Mm-hmm. That is an yeah. interesting yeah. one, and it's to me it's good, uh, good, good, good muscles for somebody who's going to be a an art director or like a marketing director to have is. I have good taste, but I can't like produce things Mm. because I've bumped into people like that, that have a better eye than me or a better at articulating. Like this is the style and this is it. And this isn't it. And there's fine differences between the like, yes and the no there. And I'm like, man, you have like vision. And it's not like somebody just being picky for the sake of being picky. Like there, I see what they're saying and I'm like, yeah, let, let me go. Let me go run over there. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think it's like it's like most stuff in life where the people who are naturally good at it like pick it up easier and have more fun doing it, and so like m- are more likely to make a career out of it. 
Uh, but I think that anybody can learn it. Uh, at least I like to I like to think so. Like it's it is a because because like like you were all saying like Ash, you've developed a nose for like when is the project done? When is it ready to ship? Mm-hmm. And you can't have that day one. That mm-hmm. is something you have to develop over time, yeah, which makes sure. me think the other parts of it you can develop over time too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like the skill aspect, it it develops over time because I mean, like like Joe said, if you look at some of the stuff I created in two thousand seven. Like, it'd be like, it's not even the same person. Like, it doesn't even look like, it'd be super funny to actually look at. I wish I can show you stuff. But yeah, it's like, it's, you know, you develop that skill over time and you start to develop even your style over time just by the repetition of it. But I mean, I truly believe like that everyone like has, because I mean, we're created by a creator, right? Like he's a creative God. I think everybody has some sort of creative aspect to their personality or in their, in their mind or in their heart, whatever you want to say. But even if they're not like an artist, like I say this to my husband a lot, like, because like he couldn't, like he, he can't draw for anything. Like that's like his least like, you know, skill he has, but he's so creative in very different ways than me. And like, even the way he processes things. So I think like everybody, you know, whether you're a designer or not is, intrinsically creative in some way whether that's you know i don't know music or whatever but yeah i think everybody is can be creative actually i uh i think i'm gonna i know you did you meant as a compliment but i'm gonna start using it as like one of those like subtle insults to people wow you're just such a creative processor (laughs) (laughs) you're just so creative you're so special creative in so many ways but this one (laughs) <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, uh, guys, this is already fantastic. And uh, I feel like every one of these episodes and conversations are like a totally like new daily special at the, mm-hmm. at the soup kitchen. I don't know why we're at the soup kitchen, but <laughs> they're, they're, every one of them is different. And, and I think that's part of what makes them great. Last yeah. week, and, and, and honestly, fairly often, we end up talking about social media and yeah. how that affects either, you know, the projects you have coming in as a as a creator, or maybe it's part of your job, maybe you're a social media manager for somebody else, or you're a church or an organization, and like, you've got to put stuff out there. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, you're probably touching it at some level, because just by the nature yeah. of the thing. Um, and so I, I we had a different topic set up for today. And I was on the on the phone earlier with a buddy and he dropped this line and he's actually going to be a guest in a few weeks. And I was like, boom, that's that is that is the topic for today, because I think it is fresh. It's fantastic. It's wild. And the question is, what would you do if tomorrow all the social platforms blew up? Mm. You got canceled. TikTok, yeah. like what got tanked, mm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Social media is no longer a thing at all. Yeah. What are you doing? Um, both with your time, but also like, okay, cool. Like we had a nice break. Now we are, you know, uh, we got to drum up business. How does, how does my thing work now? And I, I really wanted to, I, I'm excited to hear y'all's responses because, you know, everybody at the table here has some reps under their belt. Like, like this is not, you know, some, some folks we've had on been at it, you know, a year, two years and, and, and you guys have been doing it a long time. Y'all may feel uh, at some level, like I do, a little bit ready to get off the treadmill. And can we? Am I going to? No. Yeah. But like, what else is out there? And I, I look wistfully and longingly at, at my friends who have said, "Yeah, I quit social media." And I'm thinking, like, how on earth could I do that? How on earth could my mm. my church or my business or you know whatever organization do that? But I just yeah. think it's a fun exercise today to try on for size. Okay, what what does your life look like thirty days into? You yeah. Know, uh, social media has has gone away life. I gave a, a, a super expanded question to give you guys time to process and think about yeah. your answers. And I have diarrhea of the mouth constantly <laughs> on these episodes. So uh, Ashley, do you want to go first or do you want me to sure. to kind of unpack my answer? And no, then we'll I go Ash, think. Joe, Josh, and then back to Josh. Yeah. Um, so, well, first of all, I would go, if there was no social media, I would go back to old school and I would start myself a street team and I, we would pass out flyers on the cars in the mall, mall parking lot telling uh, people that I do design to market myself. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. But, oh, no. I was, I said, that sounds yeah. charming actually. Cause you love working with local, don't you? 
Uh, yeah. I mean, I love working with local clients. I mean, the majority of my clients aren't local, but um, yeah, oh, okay. no, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. I've actually talked about this Street team. Um, with my husband. Like, I think it, so I think about it in two ways. So if social media, like if, if I just got canceled myself and everybody else was still on social media, I would probably like lose my mind. Cause I'd be like, Oh, well, everybody else is still out there doing it and I can't, but if everybody got like social media was just done, like they just took it away and everybody yeah. was like at a level playing field. I'd be like, okay, cool. Well, let's, let's do this like the old school way. Um, and I think that would actually be kind of nice if nobody had it, like, I'd feel like it'd be fair. Um, but I don't know, like, cause I use social media for marketing, like as far as getting my name out there, I guess. So I, like, that would be my first thought is like, how am I going to market myself without social media? And I think I would, you know, obviously go back to like the old school way of, you know, going to events here in town and meeting people, passing out business cards, like that kind of stuff. Um, but as far as like, cause I also use it to create just for fun, like Joe was saying, like to kind of explore, mm. like it's almost like a medium to just create stuff um, that I wouldn't normally create for clients. So yeah. if, if that gotta, got like, scratched that itch too. Yeah. So if that went away, I don't know. I feel like that I would kind of, I don't know. I don't know if I would really like have the desire to create stuff just to create it for fun. Cause I don't, I don't know even know where I'd put it, you know? So I don't know. Yeah. That'd be kind it of is weird. A, it is a nice exercise. Like, to, to know that, Hey, like I'm making this for, for me, but like somebody else is going to see it and react to it and give me some like kind of feedback on it at some level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm, I hadn't even thought about that side of things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, obviously we're going to be continuing to unpack the layers of this, but those, those great little pass number one, Joe, what you got? Um, I mean, I probably have a lot more time on my hands, so <laughs> I don't know what I do with that, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess with anything beyond social media, it's like, I mean, to me, it's always been about building relationships. So I guess I'd lean into those relationships I've built through the years. Um, you know, like if it was like looking for work or, you know, like, you know, to me, it's always been like try, try not to burn any bridges, you know, along the way. And I think, you know, in anything uh, like this, like, you know, just lean into those relationships I've built through the years, go back. You know, maybe make some phone calls or emails, uh, you know, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, as far as like drumming up work, I think there's enough built there that I could go back to. Um, yeah, I, as far as like posting work and things like that, it's been I've kind of been on a, a I would say a long sabbatical from posting work. I mean, I've, I've been away from it for a while and uh, just I, so I'm also in that process of like, you know, what if I just stop, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but. You know, part of me is like, you know, I do still have that itch in there somewhere and, you know, like I don't want to let go. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if uh, I ever get to that point of like, OK, just completely off social media. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I do, you know, I love from the beginning, from the get go, when I started creating and posting, uh, when there was only like uh, my wife and my mom following, like that was always fun, uh, you know, and then as it grew, you know, uh, you know, maybe it does, there's a little bit more intimidation or like, you know, even mm -hmm. me as somebody who's been doing it for a while, it's like, you know, putting stuff is out there. So it'd be nice to maybe just not have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. For mm. sure. Yeah, that's, uh, as we were doing the intros, I realized, oh, you guys are not like super, super, like y'all, I'm sure like open Instagram and stuff, but y'all aren't like on the grind, like posting all the time. So I said, y'all, mm -hmm. y'all already are kind of thinking this way at, or, mm -hmm. or potentially, and, uh, or at least have adjusted your, your life around at some point. And Joe, you mm -hmm. also mentioned, you know, like, uh, just, there's a little itch or a little fire, a little spark to do it, but also kind of want to get off the bike. And yeah. I've, I've realized that most of my like design heroes, like, like the guys that I'm like, Oh, these are like modern day legends. Mm -hmm. They don't post. And like they barely do podcasts. They're like the opposite of me. They're not doing any of like this stuff right here. Uh, they're zero percent thirsty, right? Like they're just like, you know what I care about is like doing good work. And I've got the clients, I've got the awards, I've got the stuff. Now I just want to go like, like enjoy and be like a wholehearted human or like totally dive into the work. And mm -hmm. I see you guys kind of doing doing a version of that. And uh, it is it is interesting, like. Sometimes I look at them like you're crazy, and then other moments I think like, oh, uh, maybe that will be my life one day. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Josh, what are your thoughts, man? Uh, man, I got a lot of thoughts. I feel like 
initially I would feel so relieved and just like, <laughs> like I can get off that treadmill. Oh, it's like, shoot. This... <laughs> Relief yeah. is a great word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause it's like, this is, I mean, Instagram and like now TikTok and stuff, like I feel so uh, like, it feels like such a job to me um, to like post stuff and like create stuff for the gram, especially cause I'm generally just like allergic to just content for content's sake. Like, I'm only, I only really want to post something if I'm like really confident and like proud of it. Mm. And so that stuff like takes a lot of time for me. Like I've gotten a lot faster over my career. It's just like, you know, you get faster at things. Um, But that grind of like, okay, you got to post three times a day. You got to do carousels. Okay. Now carousels are out. So you got to do reels. Like, (laughs) I don't want to do a real man. <laughs> like, yeah. And I posted one, like I put a little motion to a 3D thing and it all, and that bombed. And I was just like, what am I doing here? You know, like, why am I continually trying to appease the algorithm? Like, mm-hmm. that doesn't, mm. I don't know. Um, so I think, yeah, a little bit of relief in that sense. Um, practically, I feel like there's, I don't know, we were going to talk about new business ideas uh, before. And so I was thinking about like potentially NFTs um because i've sold a few of those um but and i know joe you have as well and that stuff's really like community heavy too isn't it yeah it's so i mean almost even more so than just like drumming up work through instagram like uh i i've kind of not been burnt out a little bit but i don't i'm not in that like rat race then because that's all you know you have the the instagram grind like you got to post all the time you have to like get engagement that kind of thing um NFTs is all on Twitter. Like it's that you got to be good on that platform and build your okay. audience that way. Um, which I'm also just, I just don't want to do that. I don't have enough to say or like, yeah. Um, so in that sense, so I feel like, um, yeah, I really resonate with what you were saying, Josh. Uh, Cause it makes me think of this, this designer named Eric Hurtgen, who I think you should, you should have on the, on the pod for sure. Okay. He's like, he's at, at Eric Hurtgen. Um, on Instagram he's worked he works with like Sting he's worked with John Mark McMillan a lot just like okay. one of the most talented thoughtful like kindest designers in the business um I would say but he like you know doesn't have like a hundred thousand followers though he deserves it and um he mm. doesn't really post a whole lot most of the stuff he posts like is just like hey I made this really cool graphic for Sting whatever um sheesh and yeah, branding is on point. He's just like so he's so good. Um and so much of this yeah. is really, really simple, mm-hmm. but it just feels fresh, right? Like it's just mm-hmm. like wow. Um yeah, so, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan much following immediately. <laughs> to, yeah, to be like uh to be good enough to where I think he's got just like a, a good network of clients where he doesn't need social media to drum up work. Um so, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the goal for sure. Yeah, and Ron uh, Starling last week said said something that I was like a little bit of a gut check. He was like, we are so good at the media part. Uh, we have to remind ourselves to be good at the social part. Like that's, you know, yeah. people are going to congregate and gather and want to talk and share experiences. And that's going to happen. I think if, you know, if all the social platforms blew up tomorrow, it would happen. Like I think uh, in-person event attendance would skyrocket. Uh, Mm -hmm. So anytime, whether it's a creative conference or something you're trying to get like clients out of or whatever, like, you know, I would, I would now take all of the time, effort and money that I put into social and and reallocate some of that to, uh, Hey, I need to make sure I see my buddies. Right. I want to show them what I'm working on. I want to like, you know, go catch up and, and, and get inspired and and get in the room with some people. Um, Not that that's not a priority now, but I think we get little sips at that all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, 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 the word, the fact that you used the word relief though, Josh, man, that was, and the fact that I resonated like so hard with that immediately, I was like, mm-hmm. oh no, we, we need to make some adjustments if it feels like that much of work to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also haven't posted anything yet this year and been feeling, uh, a, a mounting daily guilt, uh, about that too. Like, mm-hmm. oh gosh, I mean, I did post about shaving my mustache, but that's, that's about, the extent of it so far (laughs) um yeah so what would i do if all the platforms blew up tomorrow and regardless of whether or not everybody else has access to those things like i don't have access to them anymore 
how am I going to like, I think priority one for me would be okay. Like 99% of my work is project based. And so I don't know where next month's mortgage is coming from. Cause I got to go like meet those people and sell that work. And so I would immediately get into sales mode. Um, and like, you know, all of you have kind of expressed like, Hey, we've, we've been at this a while. We've got a bank of relationships, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I think really what social media, like how we should be using it is to like meet people and make connections and actually, um, like, like have conversations with other people. And there's other ways to do that. Like we said, you know, you were joking about the street team, Ashley, but like literally like, okay, if you're focused on a type of work that can be local, uh, that may be a great move for you. Um, for me, I probably would be traveling a good bit more and I feel like I would really, really, really put a ton of focus and, and emphasis on search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. Like how do yeah. I show up when somebody says church logo? Yeah. Um, and man, if I was spending the time now that I am prepping stuff for social on that, man, that'd be, I, I really feel like I could get somewhere. And maybe that's a thing for 2023 because mm -hmm. uh, back in 2022 was the first time I started showing up in search engines for youth logos. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh shoot. Like I didn't, I didn't really like do any new work or activity to, to like get this opportunity in front of me. That feels great. Right. Like it's, it's just like a referral from the interwebs. Right. Yeah. Um, whereas like, you know, you work on the Instagram post, you throw it up and then somebody says, Oh man, somebody shared your stuff. I found you, but then it's gone. Right. Like it's, it's kind of over after a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think SEO is my short answer that I made really long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like what other what other types of things would you be replacing that time with, Ashley? Hmm. Um, I think for me, like. I don't would know. Would you get another chicken or would you like do it still keep doing work <laughs> stuff? No, I wouldn't get another chicken. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think like for me, I don't think in my life I'll ever be able or I'll ever be doing something that doesn't, isn't involved like with something creative just because that's just who I am as a person. So I think honestly, like if that time was taken away, um, I don't know, like I would focus on doing something like creative with my family. Cause I'm kind of, I'm at, I'm at a place with my career, but then also like with, um, my husband's career and everything where I could take time to kind of figure it out for a minute, you know what I mean? And I would take mm -hmm. time to kind of, um, to do something like that. But then, um, I was thinking about this yesterday. Sometimes like, honestly, like this is a little off topic, but like, like, so I'm taking it a step further, I guess. Like if tomorrow, not only did social media blow up, but like my business was like ripped away from me. Like I just couldn't do Ashland or design anymore. It's done. She like, said, you said tear off a bandaid. I'm taking the whole leg. Yeah. Off. If like, I just took my whole life. No more side business at yeah, all. Everything's gone. Like sometimes a part of me, like a little bit, like I always want to do something creative, but I also kind of would maybe want to do something entirely different. Just like hmm. completely different. Like um, kind of off topic, but like I went on a field trip with my kids um, class yesterday and we went to a water like the, how they purify our water for our city here. Like there was the whole factory and stuff. And I was like, so amazed by the process of them cleaning this water. Like I thought it was the coolest thing that I was like thinking for a second. I'm like, you know what, if my business wasn't here, I would come work at this place. Cause this is so cool. Like, and it has nothing to do with anything I do, but sometimes there's a little bit of part of me that I'm like, well, maybe at like one day I'll do something entirely different. So maybe like if social media was taken away and my business was taken away, I would maybe kind of pursue something like that. Like That's just something entirely different. Water purification. Yeah. Ashley Ulmer, water purification. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That'd be my side hustle. I love it. I love it. Uh, Joe, what about you? What's uh, What are you filling that time with other than, uh, uh, you know, drumming up new work? I mean, to be honest, I mean, I think that's where – I've been the last six months and I've just been feeling it with like family and uh, being more involved. Um, so like, I like, man, I, I hit the grind like early on. My kids are now like 12, 10 and six. Um, but 
you know, or when they're, the oldest was young and she, I hardly ever saw her because I was mm. in that mode of like creating work one for the fun of it, but two to get work. Uh, my early years yeah. of freelance was pretty tough and that was before starting these other companies as well. So uh, I think I'm at a mode now, like of kind of like, it's okay <laughs> not to be in the grind, which is weird because yeah. I, I mean, I even started working, you know, from, uh, I started working since I was 13. Like I've never not had it. Like, you know, um, we, we didn't grow up in a, you know, in, in the household that we had, like I had to work just to, you know, make ends meet and stuff like that. So, um yeah. like i knew like hey that that struggle is over there you always got to be hungry and so like but like you know now it's, don't have to you know which is weird uh -huh. um so there is that disconnect and you know that's something i've been dealing with you know kind of processing the last year or so of like hey joe you don't always have to like go so hard um mm -hmm. and you can spend things in another uh so it's like right now i'm in a season where uh my kids are you know in um uh athletics and i'm volunteer coaching and so like i'm like super upset like i've turned my obsession <laughs> for what i used to do like you know into that um and like with the art stuff like that would i post like it, i would spend an hour creating art but i spend six seven hours creating content based on that art whether it was videos mm. or tutorials and then oh. it's like the trade off like for what like you know what, yeah. what's the trade-off um and then it's like you know you get older and you realize like hey man you're just really taking time from your family and like, mm -hmm. what is that worth? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so it's it's tough. Like, I think if everything was gone, like it's I'm in that process. But I also part of me doesn't want to let go because, you know, I always swore to myself that I wouldn't be, you know, one of the, a, a creative or an artist that like just ends up managing other artists or directing, you know, like oh. I always want to be. In yeah, you want to stay in the process. touching the yeah. world. Yeah. So I've so, said similar yeah. things. Yeah, so I don't know. It's it's tough because I don't want to let go of it, but at the same time, I like see the value of the time, especially at the season that my kids are, you know, going like in a couple of years, like old is gonna be driving pretty soon mm. out of the house. Like, you know, you kind of start like the, the perspective starts mm. changing. And so yeah. yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at with that. That's interesting. Sorry, Josh, I know you're next, but I just want to say this. It is interesting because our oldest is 12 as well. And I literally had that revelation the other day. I'm like Dude, he has six years left with us. Like, I mean, if he like went and left to, for college and it literally like I woke up the other night and I'm like, I need to take like if I'm going to if I'm going to be pursuing like my creative career, I need to like include him in that. Or I mean, all three mm. of them, but I mean, because he's very creative, too. And so like I'm like, how can I like spend more time with him by doing what we both love because he, we don't have much time with him, but it's crazy. Like that. You said that cause your, your oldest is 12 too. I wonder if it's just mm -hmm. kind of like a, a life stage. Yeah, it's, it's hitting, it's hitting mm -hmm. hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Sorry. I'm all getting I, up here. <laughs> no, I feel that. And my kid, my oldest is six and I'm already like, oh, as soon as he's going to be nine and then he's going to be 13 and then he's going to be 25. And like, it's so like, I, I even look at some of that stuff now and, and Joe, I feel like that is such a healthy answer. It wasn't, um, you know, in reality, mine might be like, go like watch more TV shows or something like lame or whatever. But you're like, no, like I would definitely fill that time with, with more family. And I'm already kind of mm -hmm. taking steps towards that. Mm -hmm. Um, and one thing I want to, I, I want to kind of couch for you guys, uh, and Josh, maybe you could kind of speak into this. Do you feel like the grind season is a required step if you're going to have like a freelance career or like maybe not freelance, but like have your dream job or a go do be the thing that you've set out to do? Like, do you have to go through a season of that? I think we all agree. Like there's seasons of life. Like life is not about work. Um, you know, you work to live, not the other way around. But are there some... Joe, I, maybe what I'm saying is like, Joe, do you feel like you you wasted that time and you should have been with your family that whole time, which is like a terrible way to say it. But um, uh, no, you see what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I mean, I think it, for me, it was needed. Like, you know, I, I'd be the first one to tell you I wasn't prepared to go. I've been freelancer. Now. I, I, I don't even say freelancer anymore, like independent uh, artist or, it, you know, because it's uh, I don't do as it much is different. freelance client now, but nine years ago like it started nine years ago did not have a financial i was not financially set to do it like it just one of those things that you know we moved into it and like you just had like for me i had to put food on the table 
And it was mm-hmm. just like that was the driving force. Uh, it wasn't like to create just, you know, some of it was for fun, but it was like, OK, got to pay bills. Uh, so uh, I feel like, you know, for many years in that, even before that, like I was burning, um, you know, I was I was working, but I also freelance. So, I mean, I was working huge amount of hours, 60, 80 hours a week, you know, just just cool. nuts. And I wouldn't wouldn't see my family. But at the time, like that's what I needed to do to provide what needed to provide. And so um, that led to burnout that led to, you know, uh, you know, anxiety, depression. I mean, that so like that, yeah. that just kind of all eventually hit. And then, you know, eventually, like, you know, you kind of start that that changes your perspective of what's important. And so, like, I know that for the long haul, you can't do it. But, you know, sometimes it is a necessity. Uh, and again, I come from the background like I wish, you know, now looking back, I don't think I wasted that. But, you know, we're thankfully to be at a place right now where, you know, we're you know, we could provide and, you know, we're sitting in a safe space and, you know, my family doesn't go hungry, you know, and stuff like that. So, like, I, I know it's because of the fruits of what, you know, but, um, you know, I know some people don't have that luxury even now, like at, at my age or my stage of life. And so yeah. I'm super blessed to to be able to to be be in that season now. But, yeah, I, I think there's some sort of grind in order, like freelance, freelance is cutthroat, man. Like it's it's tough. And, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I was definitely not prepared. And when people email me or message me like, hey, man, it's not easy. Like, don't do what yeah. I did because, I, I, you know, it led for two, three years of just struggling and just like, you know, overworking um, and taking on jobs you didn't want to take on. So uh, but I do feel like there is a part of grind and kind of just having to be hungry um, to kind of make it. I think that's good, um, Josh. It- True faults. The grind season is necessary to get where you're trying to go. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I totally agree with Joe. Like, um, I mean, it goes back to that ten thousand hours thing. Like, to really develop mastery, you just have to put the time in. And honestly, I would say even more, even more than just time, it's like it's quantity. Like, you have to do a large volume of work as you're developing mm. your eye, as you're developing the technical skills, um, and and i feel like i heard a quote like a long time ago that was like if you're not embarrassed by your past work you're not growing at all um mm. and so it's like a good a good indicator of how far you've come like i have a uh you might want to show it or, i don't know but uh i have a dribble account or, i don't know if you guys remember dribble at all but uh yeah, yeah. um with like w- right after my first son was born he's eight now um i started doing like 100 days of design thing and posting trying to make something every day um because a i was building on my portfolio to try to get another job and then b i just like i kind of had a um just a feeling yeah i guess i've always had this mindset of it's just like the if you build it they will come kind of thing like if you if i can just get oh josh warner i posted the link in the um in the private chat that one yeah that's a search um, but you're <laughs> let me pull it up here maybe that's why i'm not getting more clients um <laughs> like if you build it out something like if you if i can just focus on getting really really good at this then then i'll be okay and turns out like creative the creative industry is just like a lot more than that like if you scroll all the way to the bottom you'll see some of the very first stuff that i made like in 2015 and it's like not great <laughs> but this is like i okay i'm waking up and i'm gonna make something I'm waking up at mm. five before my son wakes mm-hmm. up and i'm gonna make something and i'm gonna post it um but yeah, I feel like as kind of embarrassed as I am by some of this stuff, like I haven't I, taken it down just because it's like this is where I've come from, you know, like this is everything I am now is kind of built off of the work that I did previously, like eight years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and, also, and we've I, talked to but go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, Josh, you said in, a, in another podcast uh, or another episode, I mean, um, that like you would recommend new designers to like join a church because it's like you're going to learn how to do everything and you have to crank it out really fast like yeah you it is like a really good like pressure cooker for getting good or better at least quickly Mm. um and i'd say if you want to like go from good to great you might probably want to go somewhere else um unless you're at like elevation or hillsong or something like that but just when you're first starting out just having to do a huge volume of different things it's probably mm-hmm. the biggest key and just yeah having that hunger to get up and just do the work um 
And yeah, that's I mean, like, excellent. That's really everything though, you know, like I, like I'm a big sports guy and it's like, I would think about what are, you know, I feel like being like a top level, level creative in, in a lot of ways is similar to being like an elite performance athlete. You know, you just have to like put in the time. You have to think a lot about, you know, your mental state, like being physically in shape has a lot to do with being able to be creative on demand, you know? Mm. It was like, you got to perform on deadline time. Like you have a conference graphic coming up in like two weeks or something, or like probably more like three days or something. And you have to put together three mm-hmm. concepts. Like you can't just like wait until you're inspired. You have yeah. to have ideas yeah. already circulating in your mind for like the next couple of years. And you only do that by like putting in a lot of work, being very interested in design um, or like whatever you're, you're doing. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's super good. Um, and I, and I agree too on like the, uh, I think that's a great distinction with the church stuff. Like you, you cut your teeth on a lot of things, but if you are the most interesting, special, visionary, creative person that you interact with, uh, regularly, like you need to, you got to be really intentional about, uh, getting outside of that and like finding deeper waters to pull from, And a lot of times in church, especially if you're in like a mid or small market church, like, you know, that is it. And nobody understands what you do. And you're switching skills so much that, you know, you never quite really get great at videography. You never quite get great at like, um, you know, just all the different tools in the tool belt. And so like you go out, go to some other place where you can learn kind of the next level. Uh, whether it be systems or just really rounding out your skill set or, or what have you. I think, I think it's mm-hmm. an excellent, excellent point there. Um, yeah, this is, this is super good. Uh, and I think that the taste thing, I mean, all, I feel like all this is like kind of melds together. I just noticed like people that have like done it, I see kind of common phases or like steps that they take and they go about it different places or different ways. And, and kind of like the timing of these looks different, but I feel like everybody has that, like, Oh, I got working at it. Now I got to get over the hump. And you know, that after that point, you've got a, a, a bedrock of clients, you've got mm-hmm. a bedrock of skills and a body of work that you can kind of pull from. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely team. You got to go through the grind phase and I waited probably, you know, eight plus years into my career to start really getting hungry and getting after it. Um, but my life pre that kind of Valley of like knuckle down, like practice and like go meet people. And like before that and after that is wildly different in terms of my enjoyment of the work, the money that I make, like my relationship with clients is drastically better. Mm. And uh, I, I, I kind of like chalk a lot. Like that stuff would not have happened if I'd just been on kind of like cruise control. I have a job mode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I also want to say too, like for me personally, I didn't really like fall in love with design and art until I started doing that grind stuff. Like mm-hmm. before I think I was going through like a long period of time for of like oh what's my calling you know what's my like great calling on my life and I'm gonna like look around and pray a ton just to figure it out and it was like it wasn't I didn't find my calling until I was already doing it like and putting in the work um and that's when it was like the more I did it the more depth I found like every single day like learning more about designers and history of design and and art now I'm learning a lot more about like art in general Hmm. um which has been inspiring me um but yeah, it's kind of like, the, it's like the more you do it, I don't know, you might hate it after a while, but for me, at least the more I did it, the more I loved it. Um, mm-hmm. and so that here's propelled me a little bit more. Here's my advice on that too. Like if you say you're a generalist and you're working at a church, you're working at an agency, you're trying to decide if this thing is right for you. Um, I, I would still say like, get in there and push because I learned that a life in the music industry is not the life that I wanted at the ripe old age of it's like 19 or 20 somewhere in there and like i like if you'd asked me at 15 if you'd asked me at 18 like hey like what do you want to do i would say like i am failing i am unhappy i'm not doing what i want to do if i'm not like touching music right Mm -hmm. and i put enough gas and emphasis and like stuff on that to try it on for size and go like oh no i don't like this at that level i don't like this enough for this to be the thing so rather than me like kind of like 
carry it along and like have it on a leash and say like, Oh yeah, I've got a, you know, I'm a bedroom rock star and like the dream is to go on tour. And I'm the 42 year old guy saying that. Right. Um, like I would carry that around for a long time, but because you put it in the, like put that thing in the pressure cooker and you realize like, Oh, like this is what that feels like to actually have some of that. And I don't even like the early stages of it. You're like, mm. okay, cool. Like what if it was try the next thing? Yeah. Um, Ash, I've been talking for a long time. Do you have any, anything else to add on that? No, I mean, I was just going to say like, I think the, the early grind is, is necessary. I think it's necessary to like build your skill set, but also like, like I think of, um, you know, our, our businesses, my husband and I, we've owned throughout the years and grinding and just working all the time in that aspect of it taught me so much as far as even how to like relate to clients, like how to communicate well, um, not only just like creatively, but just like how to, um, be successful in, in that side of it too. So I think, I think putting in those hours and putting in all that time is, is necessary to be successful at some point in your career for sure. I think. And I think you're kind of touching on this. There's a, an element of momentum that comes Mm -hmm. Where you're like, yeah, you could choose to get off and do something else. But at this point, you've got systems in place. And Joe, I know that you guys, especially with Sunday Social, like y'all have a lot of stuff that needs to go out every month. And some of that's you, some of that's um, other like designers you're coordinating with. But like Jonathan has like spreadsheets of stuff and like things that need to get filled and, and checked off every month. Um, and, but like it's easier to stay on it after that stuff is set up. It's easier to, you know, do your taxes the fourth year you're out on your own versus year one. Um, and I think that again, that's like the fruit of staying after it and like get in there and do the thing. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, another kind of question we've talked about developing taste. Uh, and, and I also think, you know, like as you get to that other side of like, Oh, I've made it a mistake I see some, some people doing is they kind of stop pushing or they like settle into their style and then it loses that, that fresh pizzazz, that razzle dazzle. Yeah. Uh, where are you going these days for inspiration, new ideas, uh, and kind of like deep inspiration. So this isn't like fun reading or stuff that you're maybe like interested in as a hobby. This is, I need to be great at work. So where am I going to like mine deeper? Cause this is admittedly something that I need to reevaluate. So I'm kind of like, uh, want to just kind of hear where you guys are at on this. Yeah. Um, for me, like what you said, uh, when you like put out the question, I think sometimes I struggle with that. Like I struggle with, um, I'm kind of like set in, Oh yeah, I, I create these like cute bubbly illustrations and that's kind of like my style. That's like my thing. And so sometimes I like, do think like, oh yeah, what if one day that's just not like, nobody wants to see that anymore. Like everybody hates that, you know, like, what am I going to yeah. do? Um, yeah. But I mean, but as far as like inspiration, I'm, I always say that as far as like style wise, like creative wise, like I'm definitely a Pinterest girl. I'm always on Pinterest. Um, and I, I don't know if that's the best place to go. I just, I don't know. I like it. I like what I see on there. Um, yeah. And I definitely, as far as new, knowledge of like how to run my business and be more successful. I definitely don't do a whole lot in that area. I need to read more and, and grow in that for sure. Cause I don't really do anything other than what I've done, what I've always done, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think that some of that stuff, like for me, I feel like Pinterest is a great answer, but I feel like this is where I hate the algorithm at some level because it started showing me more and more of the stuff that I like and I, when I think about inspiration, I think about like stuff that is uninteresting and like chasing trends, a huge chunk of stuff in the middle that is just like, you know, what good designers are doing these days. Right. Uh, and then there is like, whoa, like how the heck did you come up with that idea? Well, I've been looking through, you know, record labels from, you know, the early days of hip hop. And like, that's where mm -hmm. this was kind of sourced from. And it's yeah. that deep thinking where you see you know, album art and other things come out of there. You're like, wow, this feels like it came out of left field and you seem like a genius. That's like pros looking for their ingredients at like the, you know, the fish market. They're like, they're like, Hey, mm -hmm. I gotta, 
I got to have my like my guy. Sorry, I, got, I was I watched uh, Hero J- Dreams of Sushi or Eero, however you say it. Um, <laughs> and like it's just like, oh, this is how like the top level chefs like source their ingredients. Anyway, whole separate thing. Uh, <laughs> Joe, where are you going for inspiration and ideas uh, and, and kind of like things to keep you, <clears throat> you fresh? Um, the there's a there's a special on Netflix. Uh, the the Taco Chronicles is a good one. Um, no, uh, but Taco I'm Chronicles. Getting, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, just just I think for me, it's like digging uh, and looking at pe- people's work that are not necessarily doing the same work that I am. So, for example, whether it's films or movies or painters, uh, but then also like like you said, going deeper and like, OK, who's influencing them and trying to figure out like, you know, who who are they inspired by or what are they inspired by? And maybe the, like mm. that's usually like the ultimate shortcut, like the fast way of, you know, uh, getting inspiration, I think. Uh, but to me, it's always like looking elsewhere. Um, and for me, that's that's an evolving door uh, because I never just like follow somebody like necessarily for specifically if I'm like inspired by them, like to just that's all I'm going to consume. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's one of those things that I think, like you said, it has to have different levels. And for me, it also has to not just go deep, but it has to go wide. Um, so mm. for me, that's like, again, film, photography, um, you know, just regular art. Uh, tacos, um, man, that Chronicles that I'm telling you that Netflix bro, special. Bro. I just pulled it's, it up it's, and it's, I'm telling you, I, I cannot watch this because what it's going to want to <laughs> make me want to do is eat tacos that are not available anywhere near me. Yeah, and, pro- uh, it's prob- yeah, probably, yeah, they're probably not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, you've got yeah. a little bit better access in Texas, but, um, uh, yeah. most of our Mexican food here is pretty, uh, homogenized, if you will. Uh, yeah, and the, the, the even then, like I think, and as far as like the work aspect, I think you know, following speaking of tacos, uh, you know, like for example, there's a, a buddy of mine that has a, a taco truck here, and just like his work ethic, all all the work, you know, the grind that he's putting, like that stuff is inspirational too. So like, you know, don't think you have to like just focus on like people that are doing the same thing you're doing. And I think you can find inspiration um, anywhere. Hmm. Yeah. I, I would say uh, I would echo that. Like that's something I've re- realized more recently is, yeah, there's great podcasts and books and like, you know, listicles out there that you can go and read. But people who have run successful businesses before, even if it's not in your industry, but you're like, hey, that guy like understands business. He's, you know, 30 years older than me and he gets how it works. He's weathered some storms. Go like take that guy out to lunch. Like what? What, what do you have to share on like prioritizing, you know, family over work and like, how do you balance those things? And how do you, uh, you know, what's the biggest like money mistakes you've made? Like that stuff is, is super eye opening. Um, yeah, Josh, what you got? Um, yeah, I, have, I don't know a bunch of different places. I feel like a lot of it, we were talking earlier about like technical skill and I feel like at a certain point, you know, after you've gone through the grind, you achieved, you know, once you get to a certain point, everyone's got similar le- levels of technical skill, unless you're like a specialist, you're like a really, you know, how to do everything in Photoshop, or, you know, you're a really good filmmaker, editor, or something like that. Um, and so the difference then between like being like a really good designer and like a great designer, for example, is not the technical skill then it's about how you use those skills it's like the concept behind what you choose to create with those Mm -hmm. um and so that is so like nebulous and difficult um that i think the key to that is really doing your best to um challenge yourself not just in terms of what you're making but also what you're putting in your in your brain and even just like a different approach to looking at inspiration like going on pinterest and rather than like seeing a poster and being like, I want to make that poster. It's like, well, what does this poster do well that appeals to me? And how could Mm -hmm. I take like little bits and pieces? Mm. Like if you're going on Pinterest and you're like, I want to make this style, you're just going to look like everybody else. If you're going on Pinterest and you're like, how, what's missing here? Like, what can I add that will stand out and be different? Then you're at a much better place for like creating something interesting. Like, Mm -hmm. Dude, that's no, like- so, so good. And that seems like a really healthy exercise to get you 
like as you're learning as a designer, like never stop, but especially as you're learning, uh, make a practice of like, stop. Don't just have the fun reaction to this thing, but take it apart and say, why, mm. why is this thing great? Cause that'll help you not only like reverse engineer things that you want to get good at, but also explain it because there's, I can't tell you how many times uh, a client like references a source material or like an inspiration piece or something and say, Ooh, I love this. And then I've got to be the the bad guy that says that doesn't work at all for us. Like it literally can't apply to this project because of this photo. Like you guys don't have any of the things that make this photo great. And the name of your thing is four words long and theirs is three letters long. Like the, the concept will not work for you. Mm -hmm. And so like being able to have those conversations with yourself and with the people that you're delivering work for, like that only comes from being able to like take it apart and see like you're saying. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead and continue. Yeah, I mean, that's especially difficult in, I feel like in the church world because I, I run into so many clients who are like, okay, we want to do something really new and interesting and different album cover for our like worship team or something. And then it's like, you get into the process and you've given a few concepts and it's like, it turns out what they wanted was an elevation cover. And <laughs> that was there. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, so we're, we're making elevation stuff. How do you, how do you navigate it's that? It's too like, real. How do you make something interesting? It's just, it's true. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to hate on elevation or anything like that, but they're so good and they have so much influence that like people copycat that, you know? And it's like, there's not really that, you know, if, if creativity is like taking two previously unconnected ideas, combining them and making something new from that. Yeah. Um, you, you got to really be careful that you're not just like taking the same idea and rehashing that over and over. Like you have to, yes, you're not just reheating actually. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you can't just like, yeah, reheat and regurgitate the same stuff over and over. Like if you're, if you're taking it on slash photo, you're finding a nice creative market font and then you're throwing a black market texture over the top with a verse over and over and over. Like you're not, you're just not going to grow. You know, I mean, you can do that really well. I, I will say, Guys, go Sorry, if, if you're if you're on no 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 it, this is great. This is if you're four days into your graphic design career, go do all three of the things he just said a hundred times, and you will get you will get clients, you will land work, mm -hmm. you will get a job, you will do it. <laughs> if you want to go to that next level where you're like creating work that people go, oh, this feels like fresh and interesting. Like you have a, an opinion, you have a stance, you have like an, a voice. Uh, there is something going on here that like draws me in, which is really the thing we're all after. Then you have to do, do what Josh, what do you do to get there? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Keep, keep working, I guess. Um, yeah. It's tough though, because it's like, yeah, the, that is what a lot of people really want, you know? And so it's like, how do you, you know, you can be kind of tactical in that where it's like, okay, I'm going to go into this pitch and I have three concepts and I'm going to lead with the most extreme one um, yeah. that they will definitely say no to. And I'm going to follow that up with the one that I like. That's a little bit less extreme. Soften them up feel a little. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll feel like it's a good compromise. And I'm like, okay. And then you've just like subtly manipulated them into doing something interesting rather than just like ripping off another church. Um, yeah. I mean, that doesn't is always a, work, but <laughs> that is an unspoken tool in the tool belt from the like veteran creative people <laughs> to, to like, you know, amateurs or, or people that are kind of getting their feet under them is your ability not just to have and execute a good idea, but to walk somebody through why it makes sense. And you're not being like preachy, you're not shoving it down their throat, you're not being a pouty designer, but you're actually like, they're like, oh no, I see it now. I understand. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and one thing I've done to assuming that I do this well, one thing that helps me in those conversations, when it is time, like you're up to bat, it's like, all right, now's your chance to convince them of something uh, or at least open up their eyes to it is, is kind of literally just saying you like graves into gardens album cover because it is different because it's thought provoking because it's unexpected Mm -hmm. and anything you do beyond that is is microwaving you're re reheating leftovers and it's just not going to taste as good the next day and the way that you get there is by like figure out what we're trying to say and then like what are some weird ingredients that we like that support that idea and so mm -hmm. rather than saying like we need it we want to do you know 
uh the 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 stereo the the what has become the new stereotypical like worship album cover like the the top light everybody's in a circle got really like minimal stuff and earth tones um rather than just like taking the end product and saying like we want to go there like what emotions does that convey for you and why and like does your space fit that and so like t- working from where you want to go and the ingredients that are available that are interesting like i think that that'll uh, get everybody away from, you know, just kind of going with preferences and what, what the gut read is in the room. Black market's new beta site. I haven't seen it. I don't know if you guys can see all the the comments down mm-hmm. here, but mm-hmm. um, all right, guys, this has been tremendous. I have thoroughly enjoyed these conversations here. Um, I, I'm going to answer, throw in my answer here to the, where do you get inspiration from? Uh, and I would say, one, I need to retrain Pinterest. I need to dig a little harder and find things that aren't just other dribble flash sheets of logos because that's what 80% of it is now. Yeah. now like, like, we got to get some stuff uh, that feels a little bit spicier. But another thing that I'll do anytime I'm in a rut or feel like I need to really disconnect is I will go to you know, my like grandfathers in design and go like reread those books or rewatch those, those uh, documentaries uh, and that like, again, it's not applicable to a project, but it is like, it, it gets you like stirred up in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and one thing, <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever feel this way, but sometimes I'm reading these like famous designer biographies or like, you know, their big manifesto on like their approach to art and, and, and life and all these things. And I just feel like I'm too dumb to like really understand it. I'm like this. <laughs> I'm so lost. I'm so lost. I caught like 10% of the gold you had to offer in this book. Yeah. Uh, but I still think that's a good exercise because even if you're only catching some of it, that's better than no gold, better right? Than yeah. Um, I digress. Guys, this has been a blast. <laughs> Before we jump off though, I want to uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do the show's namesake. We're gonna make a mark. Oh yeah. Um, so everybody get out your I actually have a piece of paper and a sharpie today. Uh, I forgot nice. to ask everybody in the chat, like, what is our, what's our, what's our drawing prompt for today? Y'all, the first person to respond down here in the chat, we're, we're drawing that thing. Or if you guys have an idea, um, Ashley, do you have something? Uh, no. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we, the know. topic is talking about social media blowing up. So Okay. Uh, whatever that visual is Something, for you. Yeah. Okay. Exploding social media, whatever you want it to be. Um, it could you could go really meta with this thing or not. Uh, however you want to take it. Ready? We got sixty seconds. Stop it, Siri. Yeah, you got. It's gonna be bad. Uh, and draw now? fat. Draw fat because this. Yeah, you guys can go ahead and start because this thing's gonna be uh, in the album art behind the thing. And guys, if you're joining us along in the chats. Uh, y'all s- send it in a DM, like take a pic with your phone and send it in a DM to Instagram at making a mark pod, and we'll include your artwork in the episode cover. All right, now I'm gonna start drawing. Um, need to shut up and actually do the thing. All right, hey, podcast guys, how y'all doing today? Is your life nice as we draw on screen? I hope so. Y'all get a lot of extra time today. Oh, gosh. How do these always look worse than I thought they would? (laughs) I don't understand it. Like, I, I do not understand. All right, and pencils down. Ashley, you cheater. And let's show one line. (laughs) Everybody show your your work. I did an explosion. Oh, uh, the chair. (laughs) Okay, this this might be my favorite uh, doodle session so far. Um, Because they all have such different stuff. Ash, you go first. Uh, mine's yeah. a dead phone with its grave in a cemetery, so he's dead. I love it. <laughs> I love it. 
Dustin says this is the part I'm most nervous for next week. <laughs> All right, Joe. Should what, be. Uh, I don't know. This is more like breaking out of the social confines, and like getting oh, out of wow. You know, All right. getting out of the matrix. Yeah, I think this is the first <laughs> like time we've that. had the 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 guest doodle be like a usable tech company logo. Like that was uh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> what you got, Josh? All right. Mine is a little bit, so in like the product design world, literally everybody's dream is to quit product design and go like make furniture. So this is like <laughs> the dream. So it's like, I want to go make a mid-century modern chair because that's the dream of the product designer. Oh man, I love that. I drew um, a, like a sort of nuclear explosion kind of vibe. It did not quite turn out as well, but I will say this is markedly better than my drawings have been every other episode and i was on a mission from god this week to not have the worst drawing at least i'm in the pack this time it feels like we all we all like did a great job um I've actually been working on that for like hours before this. yeah yeah this, <laughs> this was this was made before we started I, I spent three and a half hours on this uh bad boy here but guys thanks again for uh joining us that's gonna be a wrap for today huge shout out to our guest join us for today's episode we'll have links for everybody down in the show notes if you want to check them out i cannot recommend them highly enough uh, if you've enjoyed today's episode please drop a comment on the video even if you're listening to the podcast take a second and find us on youtube and drop a comment because like youtube comments are literally my love language these days i don't know why those mean more than other types of feedback and interactions but uh I, i'm just being uh, maybe a little got my heart on my sleeves and in light of all of our uh, deep t conversations about social media. Maybe I should I should let that one go and blow up this this whole thing. But who knows, guys? <laughs> That's gonna be a wrap for today. Adios. Thanks, guys.